So you've built an awesome app in Ruby or Python or Node, and it's working on your local machine, but you wanna get it out in the real world so other people can use it too. And deploying apps can be expensive. You might pay $5 over here for one, and then another $5 over there for another. And when you get to five or 10 apps, it gets really expensive. What happens if there's a way to deploy multiple apps of different technologies on one location? In this video, we're gonna be using Docker and Kubernetes with DigitalOcean. And whoa, whoa, hold on, it might sound scary, but I'm actually going to do it all through DigitalOcean's UI. But of course, you can still do it via the CLI too. We will actually deploy multiple Nginx servers and create subdomains that show you they're working. I will also show you what not to do because it can end up very expensive with you realizing too late, just like I did. And if you make that mistake, you get a nice surprise. So there are a few little gotchas. Then in the future, all of this could be tied together with our code on GitHub with a GitHub action where you deploy from a branch or release. But I'll leave that part for another time. Let me know in the comments below if that's something you'd be interested in. Before we get into it, my channel is about getting you into open source, full stack web development, DevOps, so you can get the job, clients, and money that you deserve. If that sounds interesting, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel below and hit the bell button so you get notified every time I go live and post a video. Also, you can come and chat to me and our awesome Eddie Hub community in Discord between videos and live streams. So before I show you DigitalOcean's dashboard, let's talk about what is a container. A container is a standard unit of software that packages up code and all of its dependencies so the application runs quickly and reliably from one computer environment to another. A Docker container image is a lightweight, standalone executable package of software that includes everything needed to run the application. Code, runtime, system tools, system libraries, and settings. Container images become containers at runtime, and in the case of Docker, images become containers when they run on the Docker engine. Available for both Linux and Windows-based applications, containerized software will always run the same, regardless of the infrastructure. Yes, the same, which means no more saying it works on my computer. Containers isolate software from its environment and ensure that it works uniformly despite differences, for instance, between development, staging, and production. Containers are a good way to bundle and run your application. In a production environment, you also need to manage these containers and run the applications, ensure that there's no downtime. Therefore, if a container goes down, another one needs to start and take its place. This is where Kubernetes comes in. Think of it like Kubernetes wrapping your Docker containers. It manages them for you. Kubernetes provides you with a framework to run distributed systems resiliently. It takes care of scaling, failover, and deployment. For example, Kubernetes can easily manage a deployment for your system. It does rolling deployments, and it can also do rollbacks, but we'll get into that in a second. Kubernetes service discovery and load balancing exposes a container using its DNS name or their own IP. And if the traffic to the container is high, Kubernetes will able to load balance and distribute the network traffic so that deployment remains stable. When it comes to storage, Kubernetes allows you to automatically mount a storage of your choice, such as local storage, public cloud, providers, and more. I mentioned rollouts and rollbacks. You describe the state of your deployment and Kubernetes will change the actual state to your desired state at a controlled rate. For example, you can automate Kubernetes to create containers for your deployment, remove existing containers, and make sure they adopt all the resources in the new container. You can also tell Kubernetes how much CPU and memory each container needs, and it'll make sure they fit onto the right nodes. Kubernetes also can restart, replace, and kill failing containers so that none are exposed to your users until they are ready to be used. Also, Kubernetes can manage secrets and sensitive information such as passwords, OAuth tokens, SSH keys, and you can deploy and update secret application configuration without rebuilding your containers and also without exposing them. Right, now that you know what Docker is, now you know what Kubernetes is, let's jump in DigitalOcean dashboard and let's get our hands dirty and look at some of those exciting things. As you can see behind me, I've got the DigitalOcean's control panel. 
and I've gone to the Kubernetes tab on the left hand side and then we've got this nice big blue button to create a Kubernetes cluster. You can also get there directly by going to the top right create green button clicking on it and selecting Kubernetes. They do the same thing. Now I've hit create it's going to take us to the form so we can decide where we want it what version etc. By default the latest is selected I highly recommend sticking with the latest. I'm going to choose London because that's the closest to me. In terms of the node plan I'm going to go for the basic which is $10 a month and a single node. It will give a warning to say to prevent downtime during certain situations that two nodes is better but that's fine we're going to have rolling deployments so therefore there should be no downtime during that moment only if something goes wrong. I'm going to keep the name the same so let's hit create cluster. It takes a few minutes to create but while it's being created there are things that we can do. It gives suggestions on what to install so the CLI so we can manage the Kubernetes cluster, also the DigitalOcean CLI as well, so we can do some more management there. Gives you a config to download. I'm going to go straight to the install one click app and it lists a few popular options. And you can also go to the marketplace where you can select lots of other free applications. But all we need here is the Nginx ingress controller. So I'm going to click install and that will install once the Kubernetes cluster is up. And once it finishes, we'll also get a big blue button at the top here right next to actions where we can go to the Kubernetes cluster dashboard and we can do some more management there where we can actually install our containers and our applications. Why this is being set up, one thing to note, I'm going to keep reminding you that when we go to the Kubernetes cluster control panel and we install apps, if you select external, it will create a load balancer for each container. And you don't want that because that can get very expensive. That's why we're installing the app Ingress. That will then create a load balancer to point external traffic to our Kubernetes cluster. We just need one of those. It costs $10 a month. So it's 10 for the Kubernetes cluster, 10 for the load balancer that's ingress but then from that we can deploy an unlimited amount of apps therefore bringing the cost down and down I mean you can even deploy apps for your friends so that will GitHub action so it's all automated they don't have access to your keys and so forth lots of things that can be done and then you're only limited by the resources on the cluster let's give that a few minutes <laughs> Now you can see that our Kubernetes cluster is green and also Ingress has been installed. And so we've got this blue button at the top. If I click this blue button, we get a new tab and you're going to see graphs and green and green ticks. And you might see some red ones in a bit, but you've got information about your Kubernetes cluster. The parts you're probably most interested in are deployments, pods, services, and Ingress. And there's nothing at the moment. We're going to add something to this. So let's deploy something. So if we go to the top right, actually before we do deploy something, let's go back to here. And if we click on Kubernetes on the left, you'll see that we have a single cluster. We've got a single cluster that's created very recently. And then if we go to networking and then go to load balances, we also have one load balance. And that is because we installed Ingress. If we just installed the Kubernetes cluster, we wouldn't have this. So we're paying $10 for this and $10 for the Kubernetes cluster, but that is it. We can now install loads of apps. So let's install something. So as I mentioned, here's the top right, click on the plus button. We're going to create it from form. So really nice and simple. If we say Nginx, I'm going to call it 10. I've created loads. I have recorded this video many times and every time there is an issue, like I'm out of focus or sound isn't recorded or my screen wasn't captured, so many problems. So let's just go 10 because we are going to create some subdomains and I don't want to reuse any existing ones due to DNS. And then the actual container image is called Nginx. We want a single pod and service we want internal. Remember I said earlier, if you pick external, yes, it'll be reachable externally, but you'll have a load balancer for each deployment, which you don't want because it will charge you $10 per deployment. So we're going to choose internal and we're going to expose this in a moment using the ingress load balancer that we added earlier. So we'll say port 80, port 80 and we'll deploy. So that's one being deployed. And so while that's being deployed, you can see the gray icon is deploying. Let's deploy a second one as well. So we're going to call it number 11. The container image is the same Nginx. Again, the same internal, and it's going to be 80 
80 and let's hit deploy. So now we've got two deployed. So while both of those are deploying, what we need to do is we need to update Ingress so it can route traffic through to these two Nginx containers. So next we'll go plus again, but this time we're gonna create it from a YAML config. And so there is a little bit of config here. Here's one I prepared earlier, and you will see that it is quite straightforward. We're specifying the API version and what kind it is. So this is targeting Ingress. Some metadata, we'll call it web, so it appears as web in our list, and namespace, We'll just give it default and we want two rules let's call it nginx 10 hyphen test dot dashboard hub dot io and we're going to create these subdomains in a moment in DigitalOcean, and you'll see how straightforward it is and we're going to route through to the service which is nginx 10. then next we're going to do the same again but we'll call it nginx 11 hyphen test dot dashboard hub dot io a domain that i use for a startup that i created a while ago that is currently in the holding pattern so don't worry and then we're going to create it to be nginx 11 service and it's going to go through on port 80. so we're going to hit upload let's get this going and so now that's going to start doing its bit and literally in a minute it will be ready to go we've got our services and we've created our ingress 10 seconds ago and it's still probably being set up so while that's happening let's go back to DigitalOcean. And if we go to networking and we go to domains and we go to dashboard hub. So we're gonna create some subdomains. Let's create nginx10. And you can see underneath it's already auto completed it to say nginx10.dashboardhub.io. But I'm gonna put hyphen test at the end just in the future. If I ever forget to delete this now in the future, I'll know that it was just a testing domain. And we're gonna route through to, let's check our load balancer. So if we open a new tab and go to load balancers, we'll see that it's A565. So we wanna go through to A565, check it's the right one. Go through to the load balancer and we're gonna create the record. Let's hit create. Let's do a second one, which we're going to call 11, and it's going to go through to the same load balancer. And to create subdomains is free. So now we've got these two being created. So now if we go to nginx 11 hyphen test dashboard hub .io, you'll see it says welcome to nginx. But let me prove to you that we are controlling this. So if we go back to ingress and we hit edit and on one of them let's just pick the second one to number 11 if we change that from 80 to 81 and hit update give that a moment to update but very quickly we should then see that the nginx page should now show bad gateway because the domain works and it's pointing to the right load balancer but once it's rooting through into the kubernetes cluster it can't find the right container so let's have a look 503 service temporary unavailable and what we can do is we can go back, we can hit edit, change that back to 80. And then in a moment, we will see that this will be back up and running and shows us Nginx. That's how quick and awesome it is. So you can deploy Nginx, Mongo, Python, Node, Ruby, PHP, anything that you wish, all for a fixed price, which I think is excellent. Other things to note, don't choose the external option when making a deployment, but also the other thing to note is when you do delete deployment, so if I delete number 10 now, for example, that will disappear in a moment, but you must remember that it's still running and you would need to also delete it from here as well. When you destroy the Kubernetes cluster, the load balancer with Ingress should also go. However, if you created external containers that got a load balancer automatically created for them, those will not be deleted. So don't get caught out like I did and have lots of orphaned load balancers which are being charged for. Let's go back to deployments. We've only got Nginx 11. And if I go back to services, you can see 10 is still running. If I hit delete and delete this from running services and you can see now it's disappeared. But if we go to the Nginx page, this is showing us number 11, so Nginx 11. If it refresh, it is still there. If I refresh, maybe I'll click on one of these to show you that it's working. Refresh that is still there. 10 went, but 11 is still up and running. And that's it. Now you know how to deploy a container to your own Kubernetes cluster that isn't costing you the earth because some of the Kubernetes managed services are really expensive. Any questions, any thoughts, let me know in the comments below. And I'm gonna dig deeper into this and deploy some of our community projects onto our Kubernetes cluster. So I wanna learn a lot more about it as well so we can learn together. Don't forget, give this video a thumbs up, hit subscribe if you have not already. It really helps support the channel. And if you hit the bell button, you get notified every time that I go live and post a video. Also, don't forget to join our Discord channel so we can chat between live streams and videos. We have such an awesome 
awesome community who are doing regular hackathons together, lots of awesome open source projects. They want to help you and they want to learn from you as well. Remember, collaboration first and code second. I'll also show you what not to do because it can end up very expensive. Expensive? Does that make sense? 